God, good morning and welcome to the Sunrise with Jesus. The heart has its reasons that reason knows not of. The heart in its season flows both blood and tears. We are made to suffer that we may learn to love. Friends, we always have a choice between the real and the unreal. So we have the real life and the unreal life. Now, what makes up the real life are facts. The facts of life, the hard facts of life and sometimes the harsh facts of life. And the sad part is the real life with its harsh facts are not dispensable. They are very much what life is made up of. But then there is the choice of the unreal life. And what is the unreal life? It is the fantasy world. It is the luxuries. It is about that place we escape to in order to take a little breather to come back and face the real life. Now, if you and I were to sort out the activities of our life into what goes into the real life and what belongs to the unreal world, perhaps what makes up our real world would be job, the injustice, the corruptions, what you see in the headlines, what you see in the inner pages of the newspapers, then of course family, marriage, raising children, rising prices. Well, this is what the real life is. And the unreal world would be the movies, the music, the entertainment, the fantasies, perhaps what you read in the Bible, and of course, religion, prayer, mysticism. <laughs> mysticism is something not all of us can afford, a luxury. So we understand that this aspect of our life, which we count as spiritual, is also unreal. And very many of us have therefore come to the conclusion that religion is a form of escapism. Hasn't that great and famous philosopher Karl Marx said, religion is the opium of the people. Why? Because there are people who go to a church or a temple or a place of worship and close your eyes in order to forget the harsh realities of the world. And when they come out of prayer, they look at the world as sad, as hard, as cruel and are generally portrayed. The religious people are generally portrayed as pious, but very angry, very disapproving, very sad about everything that is happening in the world and very condemnatory. Friends, but when we look at what is true Christian faith, the word of God clearly says that the gospel of Christ is a gospel of the crucified Lord. St. Paul said, we preach Christ and Christ crucified. What is Christianity? Christianity is about entering life. It is about staring into the harsh realities also that exist in life. Christianity is about entering love. It is about making commitments. It is about having your heart break. It is about walking every step of the journey right to the foot of the cross. It is about standing there facing enemies, opposition, injustice, and even death. Yes, Christianity is about looking at the cross. It is about bearing wounds and scars. It is about having your clothes soaked in innocent blood. Yes, it is about waiting in darkness. It is about waiting in grief. And then it is about coming face to face with the real God and when we come face to face with the real God finding the power to rise again to love and to live and to defeat death 
and to prove that love and life is truth, is real and is no luxury. It is no fantasy. That is what authentic religion is. That is what authentic Christianity is. It is not about escaping life and love, but it is about entering life and love. But then friends, just as we have the real life or the real world and the unreal life or the unreal world, we also have real religion, which is the gospel of the crucified Lord. And we have unreal religion. And there are three streams of unreal religion. And the first is hedonism. Hedonism is what? It goes by this creed. Eat, drink, be merry, for tomorrow you die. And so what is it about? It is about trying to live in my senses. It is about plunging in the world of senses. It is about living closing our eyes to the reality of tomorrow. It is about grabbing all that we can and experiencing all that can ever be grabbed so that we can feel to some extent that we have had some morsels of life because tomorrow we die. It is in fact an absolute unreal existence because we are not open to the truth of life, of love, of tears, of commitment, and of death. There's a second line of religion, and it's based on this philosophy. This philosophy that desire causes suffering. So you need to avoid suffering, you avoid desire. And basically, this is a philosophy that calls us to enter relationships only for the pleasure, not for commitment. So that is where you have friendships, and perhaps live in relationships where you can laugh together, eat together, sleep together, live together, but have no commitment. And here again, there is an absolute refusal to enter the real world of life and love. It's an absolute refusal for commitment and truth. And there's a third type of religion that perhaps very many of us have confused with a real religion. And this third type of unreal religion is where I commit injustice, I am unjust to my employees, I am hateful to those who are against me, I oppress those who are weak, I use my privilege to crush people, to insult people, and I would go to a place of worship and donate. I would climb mountains and go down to rivers and I would wail my head with prayer and tears while the life I live will be one of injustice and hatred, disapproval and sadness. Friends, Christianity, authentic Christianity is anything but such escapism. In authentic Christianity, the word of God clearly tells us that love is the fulfillment of the law. And moreover, where there is love, we do no evil to the neighbor. No matter whether we have prophecy, whether we have the faith to move mountains, whether we have given our whole life and our wealth in contributions, if we are unjust, if we fail in love and the righteousness that love demands, it tells us clearly that our religion is a hypocrisy. Our faith does not count because everything else, all the knowledge and the prophecy, the supernatural and the natural gifts can pass, but love remains the benchmark. Love remains the one command. Jesus says, I give you one command that you love one another as I have loved you. And the love of God has to go hand in hand with the love of the neighbor. When this is the reality of our faith, as presented by the gospel, we look to Saint John. Saint John, who defines God in a four letter word, L-O-V-E, love. He shows us that love 
firstly is not hypocrisy but is a costly righteousness where there is love there is a demand for righteousness it is saint john who presents for us the lord bowing down and washing the feet of the disciples because he loved them and loved them to the end saint john was a man who walked with jesus and yet was still a slave of an ill temper and arrogance just because he was a disciple of jesus he imagined he had a license to bring down fire on a samaritan village that would not permit them entry but when he is sanctified by the experience of the cross by the power of the holy spirit he becomes an apostle of christ an apostle of love when the violent man gives way to an apostle of mercy meekness and love of one who says god so loved us by giving his life for us and this is love to give your life for one another saint john reveals to us to be a person of religion and faith means to walk away from unreal and go face to face to the cross and saint john could do that because he who kept his ear inclined to the heart of jesus found the strength to walk all the way and to stand with mother mary at the foot of the cross to stand there looking at the innocent slain to stand there having the blood of jesus spurt out on him this is the authentic love that calls us to face the harsh realities of life to have our heart broken but to rise again and finally in saint john we see a call through the book of the revelations that he writes to look beyond the passing and the unreal to the eternal where god is real god is enthroned and we shall live forever friends to live the real life is not about escaping realities but to know yes the cross is real injustice is real but god is more real and love and justice endures dear friends there is something very remarkable about saint john the evangelist who wrote the fourth gospel the epistles and the book of revelation john never mentions his own name whenever he refers to himself he says the beloved disciple and that's what john is that's what he did not want to be i don't want to be what i am i don't want to be known by what i am but by what i am to the lord and what the lord is to me john finds his identity in a relationship he's lost in jesus he so much lost in jesus he wanted to be known as the beloved disciple our relationship became his identity remember what st paul wrote it's not i who live but jesus who lives in me and that's what john wanted he wanted jesus to live in him to be known as being loved by the lord another word he uses to himself in john chapter 19 verse 35 an eye witness has testified and his testimony is true he knows that he is speaking the truth so that you also may come to believe a witness there is second word he uses of himself i want to be a witness i want to be known as being loved as loving the master all that i want to be is to bear witness to him that's my job the only job of my life is to bear witness to the lord i witness and he said it in his first letter first john chapter 1 verses 1 to 4 the word has appeared we saw him 
we heard him, we had communion with him, and we are happy. That happiness we are sharing with you. John experienced his relationship with Jesus so much joyful. He was so satisfied, full with joy, that he wanted, he could not but share that experience, that witness to the Lord. John says it about the heart of Jesus being pierced open and blood and water flowing down. The John who says this to us, I saw him, his heart is open and his heart remains open for you. His heart will never be closed against you. Turn to him and the blood and water will fall upon you. The Holy Spirit will come to you and that's what Christian life is. And that's what John wanted to tell every one of us. Remember Jesus said, you shall be my witnesses to the ends of the earth. And John is saying, I have seen, I witness. A witness is value only if it's the first person witness. I have seen. Remember, in the beginning of his gospel, he speaks of himself and Andrew waiting and John the Baptist telling them, looking at Jesus, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. And the two of them went. And Jesus heard them coming behind. And Jesus asked, what are you searching for? And they said, Master, where are you staying? Come and see. They got the invitation. They went, they saw, and stayed with him. In the Bible, these words are very important to go, to go from oneself, from one's own interests, from one's own life, to go out of oneself. Go and see, and see, I witness, and stay with, staying with is sharing. A sharing that they had with Jesus. And that experience, John never forgot being the beloved disciple. At one time, he was very ambitious, arrogant, and revengeful. The Gospels tell us of that. But then, once he made his option for the Lord, that became an identity of John, the relationship with Jesus, total giving up of himself in order to find his own identity with the Lord. But dear friends, that's what Christianity is. I live, not I, but Christ lives in me. And John will give us a great example how to be the beloved of God, how to be a witness to him. Here I am. 
running, reaching out to Jesus, as mercy falls from heaven, you're running, you're running, fighting my desires, as mercy falls from heaven, you're running, and this I know. God is Lord for me. of all ages. That Through I know. All things made. May your nail pierce hands be upon me, Lord, as I place my trust in you. What can flesh do to me? I place my trust in you, O Lord. I worship, I worship you. you. With all my heart, lift my hands up to all Let's lift our hands up to the Lord. Raise our hearts up to Him. touch my soul. Jesus, here I am. Here I am, reaching out to Jesus. His mercy falls from your him. mercy, Lord. Here I am. Here I am. Here I am. Fighting my desire. His mercy falls from heaven. Here I am. Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, we praise you. With Mother Mary, we praise you. With all the angels and saints, we praise you. Oh God, you are here with us. You are here with us. A joy of our heart, delight to our eyes to look at you, O oh Lord, in the Blessed Sacrament. As Mother Mary looked at you, as Mother Mary looked at you for the first time, in the manger of Bethlehem, holding you, Lord, holding you, Lord, you in her arms. With great delight and heavenly joy, let me look at you, O oh Jesus. You come to stay with us. You are there for us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you. Hallelujah. 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 My dear sisters and brothers, we were singing, Here I am, O Lord. That's what Mother Mary said. Here I am, your servant. Let it be done to me according to your word. A message was given to her. A call came to her to be the mother of the savior of the world. She did not understand all the consequences. She did not understand how that would happen. How can this be? She asked. That was a sigh of her heart. Abraham had the same experience. He was called to come out of his land, his tribe, his people, to go to a world, a world, a land. I will show you the clear blueprint of the new land was not given. Only a promise. Abraham did not understand. And yet, and yet, he obeyed. Moses was called to go and deliver my people, my people from the slavery of Egyptians. Moses did not know how could he do it. I'm a stammerer. I'm coming from that place. They're waiting to kill me. God said, I will be with you. In all humility, with deep confidence in the love of our God, let us make that surrender. Our future 
our relationships our job our financial situation our children everything leaving everything in the hands of god believing the lord will be there for us the holy spirit will always be filling and guiding us let us make a total surrender of our life to the lord waiting oh jesus for your power to flow into our sick body and anguished mind you are the lord that he loved me jesus you are the lord my king with mother mary we want to tell you you send your word and you heal my disease jesus you are the lord You are the Lord my healer You are the Lord that he Let's reach our hands out to the Lord and offer in the hands of Mother Mary. The hands of Mother Mary are raised up now in intercession, in worship, in her hands. Let us give every pain, every sickness, every disability to Jesus. You are the Lord that healeth me. You are the Lord that healeth me. You are the Lord my healer You send your word You send your word and you heal my disease You send your word and heal my disease You are the Lord, you are the Lord my healer Jesus you are the Lord that healeth me You are the Lord that healeth me send your word and you heal my disease you are the lord my healer feel the power the power of the healer the power of the lord the power of the lord who came to heal us of every sickness who came to save us from every sin the lord who came to comfort us in every distress feel the power the power of the lord and praise him as you feel the healing power flowing in your body as you feel the peace of the lord filling your heart praise him praise the living god jesus we praise you lord with mother mary we rejoice in your presence the almighty has done great things for me holy be his name Mother Mary with you we praise your son Jesus hallelujah 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 praise you Jesus thank you lord Jesus praise you Jesus thank you thank you lord Jesus praise you lord Jesus thank you lord Jesus let us receive the blessing of the lord a blessing that pours down his mercy into our body and mind into our life into our relationships let us receive the blessing of the lord
The Ministry of the Divine Retreat Center needs your support as they continue in their commitment to preach the good news of Jesus through the weekly retreats, the daily online and television ministry, through the service of 3,000 disadvantaged persons, the mentally challenged, the aged, the destitute women, the sick and abandoned and economically disadvantaged families. If you are inspired to share in this ministry through the sacred service of almsgiving, we invite you to send your love offering to Divine Charitable Trust CD account number 04022310000014 HDFC Bank Chalakudi Branch IFSC Code HDFC 0000402 and email the details to divineretreatcenter at gmail.com